Hello viewers, in this lesson we will learn about the application and administration of company law in relation to securities. Objectives to learn about the application of company law related to shares and stock, to learn about the application of company law on debentures and debenture stock, to learn about the application of company law to derivatives and other kinds of securities. Viewers, now we will learn about the application of company law related to shares and stock. Various provisions of the Companies Act 2013 deal with the shares and stock. Various subsections of Section 2 contain the definitions of various segments of share capital. Sections 23 to 41 contain the provisions on public offer of shares and prospectus. Sections 43 to 72 contain the provisions on various kinds of share capital and their operational aspects. We will learn about some important provisions. Here share capital denotes the issue of shares as well as stock. Capital and share capital. As explained earlier, a company will run its business with share capital and loan capital. Basically, in commercial parlance, capital means the amount invested in a business. Under company law, share capital means the capital procured in terms of shares divided into specified number of shares each having a fixed value. Under clause E of subsection 1 of section 4 of the Companies Act 2013, in case a company provides for share capital in its memorandum of association, it must state the amount of capital and its division into various types along with number and value of shares. Companies limited by guarantee or having unlimited liability need not have share capital. In corporate language and practice, the terms capital and share capital are synonymous. Classification of share capital under section 43 of the Companies Act 2013, the share capital of a company limited by shares is classified into two kinds, namely a equity share capital with voting rights or with differential rights as to dividend, voting or otherwise in accordance with such rules as may be prescribed and b preference share capital. The persons holding equity share capital are called equity shareholders and the persons holding preference share capital are called preference shareholders. Equity shareholders take the decisions about the company's governance. Equity capital is not refundable that is redeemable. It is only transferable. Only in the event of winding up of the company, the equity capital is refundable after setting all preferential payments. Preference shareholders carry class rights. Preference shares are compulsorily redeemable under Section 55 of the Companies Act 2013. Under Section 43 of the Companies Act 2013, Equity share capital means all share capital which is not preference share capital. Preference share capital means that part of the issued share capital of the company which carries or would carry a preferential right with respect to payment of dividend and repayment of the capital in the case of a winding up of a company. The preference shares are further classified into cumulative, convertible, 
and cumulative convertible preference shares. Cumulative preference shares are those where a company does not earn adequate profit or incurs loss in a particular year and is unable to declare dividend. The same will be accumulated and arrears are paid in the year of profit. In case of cumulative convertible preference shares, the dividend fixed is accumulated and the preference shares along with the accumulated dividend are redeemed by way of conversion into equity shares on the expiry of the fixed period. Depends upon the issues of share capital, the subscribers may choose their option to invest their money in the appropriate share capital of a company. The above kinds of share capital of a company may be procured in different phases. Depends upon their stages, the share capital is called with different names. They are discussed here. 1. Authorized capital. Authorized capital is a sum of money stated in the memorandum of association of the company at the time of registration of the company. This is also called as nominal capital or the registered capital. Subsection 8 to Section 2 of the Companies Act 2013 defines the authorized capital as the capital as is authorized by the memorandum of a company to be the maximum amount of share capital of the company. Thus, authorized capital is the maximum amount which the company is authorized to raise by issuing shares. Further, the company has to pay the prescribed fees for the registration of a company based on the authorized capital. 2. Issued capital. Issued capital is the amount of capital which is actually issued to the public for subscription and allotment. It is the part of the authorized capital which is offered to the public for subscription in the form of shares. Always it is lesser than the authorized capital. Subsection 52, Section 2 of the Companies Act 2013 defines the issued capital as such capital as the company issues from time to time for subscription. 3. Subscribed capital. Subscribed capital is that part of the issued capital for face value which has been subscribed by the subscribers of shares in a company. It is not necessary that the entire issued capital must be totally taken up that is subscribed by the applicants of shares. The applicants are also called subscribers to the issue of share capital. Subsection 86.2 Section 2 of the Companies Act 2013 defines the subscribed capital as such part of the capital which is for the time being subscribed by the members of a company. A subscriber once is allotted shares by a company in response to his application will become the member of company once his name is entered as a beneficial owner in the records of a depository. 4. Called up capital. Called up capital is that portion of the subscribed capital which has been demanded to be paid on the shares of the company. If the face value of a share is rupees 10, the entire amount need not be paid at a time. It may be split into different fragments like rupees 2.5. 50 on application on each share, rupees 5 on allotment and first call and finally rupees 2.50 on final call. This may vary from company to company. The company after issuing the capital and it is subscribed either in full or in part may go for calls at its own discretion. Thus, the amount that is called up for payment on a share is called the called up capital. Subsection 15 to section 2 of the Companies Act 2013 defines the called up capital as such part of the capital which has been called up for 
payment. 5. Uncalled capital. Uncalled capital is that portion of the issued capital which is not yet demanded by the company from the subscribers. This is the liability of the subscribers to be paid when called up or at the time of winding up of the company. 6. Paid up capital. Paid up capital is defined under subsection 64 to section 2 of the Companies Act as such aggregate amount of money credited as paid up as is equivalent to the amount received as paid up in respect of shares issued and also includes any amount credited as paid up in respect of shares of the company but does not include any other amount received in respect of such shares by whatever name called. 7. Reserve capital. Reserve capital is that portion of the uncalled capital of company which has been kept in reserve to be called up only in the event of winding up of a company. The above kinds of share capital are basically applicable to equity share capital as in case of preference shares subscription has to be made in full at the time of submitting share application itself. Methods of procurement of share capital. The share capital of a company whether equity or preference capital can be procured by public offer and private placement as provided under section 23 of the Companies Act 2013. Public offer can be given only by public companies as private companies cannot go for public offer of share capital. A public company can issue shares to public through prospectus by complying with the provisions under sections 23 to 41 of the Companies Act 2013. A public company can also procure share capital by rights issue as provided under section 62 of the Companies Act 2013. Further, it can also issue bonus shares under section 63 of the Companies Act 2013. A public company can also procure share capital by way of private placement as provided under section 42 of the Companies Act 2013. A private company may issue securities by way of rights issue as provided under section 62 of the Companies Act 2013 or bonus issue as provided under section 63 of the Companies Act 2013. Further, it can also issue shares by way of private placement as provided under section 42 of the Companies Act 2013. Sections 24 to 42 of the Companies Act 2013 and the relevant rules thereof contain detailed provisions as to the method and procedure to issue the share capital either through the public issue or through private placement by both the public and private companies. The details are discussed in the other lessons. Now we will learn about the application of company law related to debentures and debenture stock. The law on debentures and debenture stock is one and the same. For procuring long term loan capital debentures are issued. Debentures are also issued like the share capital but the difference is that they are to be subscribed in full. Further they are returnable unless they happen to be convertible debentures wherein on maturity the debentures will be converted into shares. The provisions under sections 23 to 42 of the Companies Act 2013 and the relevant rules thereof relating to the public issue of shares and also private placement are applicable alike to debentures also as debentures are also securities wherever the public issue of debentures is called for by the companies. Students are advised to study the company's share capital and debentures rules 2014 for more information on public issue of shares and debentures. Subsection 30 section 2 of the Companies Act 2013 states that 
A debenture includes debenture stock, bonds or any other instrument of a company evidencing a debt, whether constituting a charge on the assets of the company or not. The definition and meaning of debenture is elaborately dealt with in the previous lessons. Section 71 of the Companies Act 2013 very elaborately deals with various aspects and also the procedure for issuing debentures. Basically, debentures are issued for a particular time frame and they must be redeemed on the date of their maturity unless they are issued as convertible debentures into shares. During the currency period of the debenture, the company must pay interest at the agreed rate without fail. Debentures are very much useful in procuring long term loan capital for the company. A debenture holder is a creditor of the company. Hence, he is not a member of the company and cannot take part in the corporate governance. Kinds of debentures. Section 71 of the Companies Act 2013 classifies the debentures as convertible and non-convertible debentures. However, by practice other kinds are also issued. They are briefly narrated here under 1. Convertible debentures. These debentures are issued in accordance with the provisions of Section 71 of the Companies Act 2013 and also the company's share capital and debentures rules 2014. These debentures contain an option to the holder to convert such debentures into shares either wholly or partly at the time of redemption. If the debentures are issued with this option, they are called convertible debentures. If the option is to convert only a part of the debentures into shares, they are called partly convertible debentures. If the option is to convert all the debentures into shares, they are called fully convertible debentures. If there is no such option, they are called non-convertible debentures. 2. Registered and bearer debentures. From the viewpoint of transferability of ownership, debentures may either be issued as registered or bearer debentures. Registered debentures are payable to a registered holder and are transferable in the same manner as shares. The bearer debentures are payable to bearer and are transferable like a negotiable instrument by mere delivery. The holder of a bearer debenture is a holder in due course for the purpose of the Negotiable Instruments Act 1881. 3. Redeemable and Irredeemable Debentures Redeemable debentures are those which are refundable on the expiry of the stipulated period. These debentures are issued in accordance with the provisions under Section 71 of the Companies Act 2013 read with companies share capital and debentures rules 2014. Irredeemable debentures are those debentures which are not refundable and no time is fixed for their redemption. They are also called perpetual debentures. The company may choose to pay it back any time it likes. All the debentures whether redeemable or irredeemable become payable in the event of winding up of the company. In the present day scenario, the irremovable debentures are not preferred by the investors and the practice of issuing irredeemable debentures is not in vogue. 4. Secured and Unsecured Debentures On the basis of providing security for payment of interest, and repayment of debenture amounts, the debentures are classified as secured and unsecured debentures. When debentures are secured by a mortgage or a charge on the property of the company, they are called secured debentures. 
These debentures are issued in accordance with the provisions under Section 71 of the Companies Act 2013, read with the Companies Share Capital and Debentures Rules 2014. When the debentures are not so secured, they are called unsecured debentures. 5. Rights debentures Presently, the trend of the companies is to offer debentures to the existing equity shareholders on rights basis in proportion to their shareholding. This is called rights issue of debentures. There are several other issues relating to the debentures for which various provisions of the Companies Act 2013 are applicable and they are all discussed in the other lessons. Viewers, now we will learn about the application of company law related to derivatives and other kinds of securities. Subsection 33 to Section 2 of the Companies Act 2013 defines a derivative as a security as defined in clause AC of Section 2 of the Securities Contracts Regulation Act 1956. Thus, a derivative is a security and a contingent claim. The provisions under sections 23 to 42 of the Companies Act 2013 are applicable to all the issues of securities and equally same provisions apply to the derivatives and also other kinds of securities. Further, under subsection 32, Section 2 of the Companies Act 2013, a debenture includes debenture stock, bonds or any other instruments of a company evidencing a debt, whether constituting a charge on the assets of the company or not. Thus, the derivatives and various other kinds of securities which evidence a debt of the company to the holder come under the nomenclature of debentures. Thus, the holders of derivatives and other kinds of securities are creditors of the company. All the provisions of the Companies Act 2013 related to the debentures discussed before are applicable to the issue of derivatives and other kinds of securities like bonds, mutual funds and like ones. The various types and kinds of other securities are pay-in kind bonds, increasing rate debentures, six monthly amortizing debentures, split coupon debentures, auction rated debentures, non-convertible debentures with tradable, equity warrants, share warrants, inflation bonds, tax saving bonds, disaster bonds, easy exit bonds, floating rate bonds, government guaranteed bonds, capital index bonds, secured premium notes, euro convertible bonds, gills, central government securities, insurance investments and like ones. All these securities are debts of the company or the issuer and the holder is the creditor. He is not the shareholder of the company to take any decisions on the corporate governance. He is an investor in the capacity of a creditor. A shareholder is also an investor but he is a member of the company and takes decisions on the corporate governance. The objective of the provisions of the Companies Act 2013 relating to shareholders is different from the objectives of the provisions on the creditors of the company. This is because 
the funds of the shareholders are transferable in the form of transfer of shares but not refundable until the company is wound up whereas the funds of the creditors in whatever form it is like debentures bonds derivatives and like ones are refundable on the expiry of the stipulated period the creditors need not wait until the winding up of the company to get back their investment thus the concept of investors protection provided under the companies act and other corporate legislations is different in application to the shareholders and the creditors even though both are investors because the shareholders relationship to the company is different from the relationship of the creditors to the company thus the students are advised to distinguish the relationship of shareholders and the creditors to the company even though both are investors many related issues are discussed in the other lessons well viewers i hope you have enjoyed this session see you in the next session thank you